Welcome back to another Mr. Lee Teaches YouTube tutorial. And if you're anything like me, uh, sometimes you want a smart board, sometimes you want a whiteboard, sometimes you want a blackboard, and sometimes you want to move those tools of yours to some other place other than your classroom or some other place other than the front of the room. And if that is you, uh, boy, do I have the great tool for you today. Uh, Google Jamboard app is available on every device out there. So it doesn't matter if your Chromebook, if your iPad, if your laptop, if your MacBook, um, if you're bringing your own device, this is available to everybody right now, totally for free. Let's check it out. So there's a couple different ways that you can get to Jamboard. This is a browser, this is just the Chrome browser. And if I go to jamboard.google.com, it pulls up my Jamboard. Now I can now I can click the plus down here and create a new jam, or I can click the little link icon at the very top on the right and open a jam. So there's a couple ways you can share a jam via a code, and I'll show you that, or you can create a new one, or you can share them just like a Google Doc because they store jams. So your whiteboard session is stored just like a Google Doc, and you can put it in Google Classroom or share a link or, or any other way that you share a Google Doc uh, to anybody out there. So let's make a jam and take a look. But I'm gonna show you how to do it in the app. So on iOS, on Android, on a Chromebook that runs Android apps, you can get the Jamboard app totally for free. It's a core product. If you're a managed district, uh, have your IT department push it out. Uh, it's one of those kinds of apps. So here in the app view, I can click the plus and I can either join a jam or make my new jam. So that's a little bit of a difference between what the Plus does in the Chrome browser versus what the Plus does in the app. So we're gonna make a new jam. It'll take just a second. And so here's my new jam. It's just a whiteboard. But here's the trick. I can, because I'm on a touchscreen Chromebook, so this is just like running off a tablet or an iPad, I, I can write with my pen. Let me, I can write with a marker. I can write with the highlighter. I can write with a brush, but then also I have handwriting recognition. So if I write something out, it's gonna recognize it and make it into an object that I can drag around the screen. Now, here's something uh, awesome, is it also recognizes cursive. Get fancy with your cursive and it doesn't recognize it, but it recognizes cursive too. Oops, there we go, now I can move it. Um, and then if I don't like something, I can always erase it. Now, if you notice, I'm not erasing the word hello, I'm just erasing the handwriting behind it. So the eraser tool is actually reasonably smart as long as you're annotating over top of something. So if you bring in a picture, you bring in a PDF, you write over top of it, you can erase that without erasing the image you're writing on, uh, which is kind of a handy feature. Now also, I taught science, and so I used to draw shapes all the time, and I can't draw a perfect circle to save my life, but uh-oh, now I can, because it does have the auto shape. So you have auto in the app. You have handwriting recognition, you have auto shape. And so right triangles become easy to draw now. Also, you have, if I can get it to tap, auto draw, Google auto draw, if you haven't looked, before uh, is a drawing recognition piece of software. Let's see, this isn't gonna be, I'm trying to draw a bird. And it thought it was a kangaroo, but look, I've got a swan in here. Um, that looks like a bird, we'll just do that. So you can see uh, <laughs> Google artificial intelligence is way better at drawing than I am and really good at guessing. Um, so. You can also change your color, obviously. It's very basic. Now remember, this used to be a $5,000 device that you had to buy and it ran this app. Now the app is available for free for everybody. Um, so improvements will be coming in the various versions. That's why I'm showing you the Android app right now because it is the complete one. Uh, every other one runs a version of this and I will show you on my cell phone also and the iOS and the phone app run exactly the same. Uh, so you'll see that coming up and I'm gonna switch over to the browser in just a second to show you that as well. But you can create uh, sticky notes. So post-it notes, just like you would 
anywhere else, uh, this would be a perfect replacement for Padlet. Uh, instead of paying for multiple Padlets, more than the three free ones they give you, uh, you can have your students actually do this because this is editable by anybody you want to give rights to, just like any other Google Doc. So you can make a sticky note, you can pinch, pinch zoom, make it bigger, make it smaller. While you're creating the sticky note, you can actually change the color to whatever you need. So um, now if you have a smart board and you're used to being able to do the circle tap to delete stuff, you can actually sort of do that with a jam board as well. I can circle, there we go. So I can circle a group of objects and then I can drag those objects around or delete them if I want. Um, now you also have a laser pointer. So if you want to just laser point stuff, you can do that as well. Now you have, I think I remember them saying up to 20 different whiteboards in this session. So if you click your little drop down from the top and you click the green plus, now we have a new board. So I can tap over to my new board. Now while we're in this screen, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the hash marks here. I can pick a dotted background, a graph background, lined paper, dark lined paper, blue or black. I kind of like the black sometimes, so I'm gonna leave it as a black. Now, when I write on the black background, I'm gonna pick white as my color. Uh, so it shows up. So I kind of like the way that looks. So anyway, uh, this integrates completely into Google Drive. And remember, it picks your drive. So if this is shared with multiple people who are editing together, so you're co-planning with other teachers and you're using Jamboard to do it, um, this is going to pull your drive, not anybody else's. And somebody else that's in the same jam with you is going to pull their drive, not yours. So the Google Drive integration is linked to the person using it, not to who owns the document or who has shared the document. Um, so I'm going to find a very specific slideshow. So here we go. This is, I'm actually searching through my Google Drive right now to do this. So I found the slideshow I want. Now I can, it comes in really small and I know that's hard to see, but if I double tap it, it makes it a little bit bigger and then I can always pinch zoom the screen and now I can scroll through my slides. So while you can't actually pull in a slide deck and go slide by slide, um, drawing over top of it and stuff like that. You can pull in a slide deck, and especially if you put some thought beforehand into the lesson, and pull the slides that you want into your session, then you can pull out the slides that you want to deal with. And then I'll pinch zoom back out. So now we're back to full screen. And I can click and drag. And then when I'm ready to talk about augmentation, I make it big, I can come back, I can change my color, and we can talk about the functionality of it and make sure that we see that augmentation is there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and erase. So you can see I can erase over top of it like I said before. Um, and then when I'm done with this slide, I just pinch it small, come in, grab the next slide, make it big. So I can pre fill a lot of stuff into these slide decks um, or out of a slide deck into the jam. Now I'm going to go to a new tab again and I'm going to show I can pull in web pages. So what can I do with the jam board? Let's just do that search. It pulls in a Chrome, Chrome browser search and, and I can put my search in there. I can change this search if I wanted to. So I'm going to click on the, the first article and let's just say I want this first paragraph. So I'm going to clip it and I can move my box to make sure I get what I want and my touch screen is not wanting to cooperate but there we go uh, I got the article and so now I have the article in here and I can zoom in if I need to and then I can draw over top of it or you know annotate how I need to uh, underline verbs, 
circle nouns, whatever we need to do. Um, and then when we're done, we just zoom it away and bring it over there. Go ahead and erase the drawing off the board, whatever what. The other thing we can do is we can do image search. Now image search actually goes out and finds high resolution images. So if you do a regular Google image search, uh, you're gonna see different images than you do if you do that image search through Jamboard. So I'm gonna look for triangles just to show an example. And there's a good triangle. So I just tap it, it brings it in. And I'm also gonna look for a protractor. That's a good looking protractor. So I grab my triangle and I'm gonna make it bigger. And we can talk about, we can talk about the angles, we can, we can talk about congruent, we can talk about Pythagorean theorem, uh, but then also I can come over and I can grab my protractor and overlay it on top of the triangle. There we go, that's about right. And then we can actually come back in later after we do that, we can talk about how those angles equal 90 degrees. We can talk about how this angle and this angle compare to each other. We can talk about how all of this functions together. And while it may not be a perfectly measurable um, situation, we can use that protractor. We can overlay whatever we need to do. You can bring whatever tools you can find on the internet into your jam and use those to teach your class. Now, one of the last things I have not shown you is the fact that we have emojis and templates. So I can pull in the calculator template and let me just zoom in really big and see if I can squeeze my fingers in here to get the, um, let me show you the trash can. I'm going to erase this stuff off. So let's make that small, uh, big size again. And I'll just take the and delete it down and move that down. And that'll make it easier to work with this template. Make it bigger. And now I think the screen recorder is messing with my ability to pinch the screen. So I'll erase this off so we can see better. So if I make it bigger, we can see what we're actually dealing with. So we have a template for a calendar. We also, in that same menu, have a template for a clock or speech bubbles or different idea boxes. So you have some built-in templates there that you can work with. Um, and then lastly, you can take a picture with the camera in the device. Uh, now I am doing a screen recording right now, so my camera is being used, but you can pick a picture that you've already taken or you can take a new picture. So I have all, I have thought completely about having students in a, in a lab situation actually go and take pictures of the results and then bring them into a jam and then draw on them and annotate this changed colors. We did this, we found this, and they're actually taking a picture and talking about what they actually did and showing you evidence of what they did as well. Uh, so lab reports are a great idea for this, as well as all the other uses I'm demonstrating. Um, so that's that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm going to show you the browser version now. Uh, so this is in the browser, so I'm going to click on the same jam we were working on. And I just went to jamboard.google.com to get here. And it'll pull up. And we can see that we have the same um, boards for us to look at here. Now, in this version, we only have a limited number of tools. So this is on any browser, anywhere in any internet connected device. But I have my pins, I have my pen, my marker, my highlighter, my brush, but I do not have the handwriting recognition and I do not have the auto shapes or the auto draw. Um, the eraser is the same, the colors are the same. I have a pointer, that's where I can use to click and drag stuff um, in the browser version. 
And then once I'm in here, I get the corners and we know how to use the corners to click and drag to make it bigger. Uh, and then I get three dots so I can either duplicate things or I can delete things. That's how I delete off of this. I also get the sticky note functionality uh, in the browser version. So that's nice too. So that way you can easily have sticky notes and do the Padlet type idea. Um, now we can share this a couple different ways. We can click the share button just like we would any other Google Doc. And we can add people uh, to, to edit or view. And you can add them one at a time or if you have a group, uh, however your situation is. But if I hit the three dots, I can do this jam code. So if I turn that on, it gives me a code. Now there is no space in there. It just breaks it up like that. I don't know why. Uh, but if you put in that code, now anybody in the domain can find and access this jam. Now I can change that by going back into the app. And if I share it the same way in the app, I can change it to view or I can change it back to no access. So if you're going to do this with a class, I highly suggest doing it view only uh, to begin with. Um, or you're going to have a lot of writing on the screen or changing the things and you can't, you can see who's doing what at the time they're doing it, but you can't go back and look and see who wrote something five minutes ago or who deleted something five seconds ago. Um, if you catch them in the act, you got them. If you don't catch them in the act, there's no way to track it right now. Now also you can download this as a PDF. So that would be the whole thing downloaded as a PDF. So we have three boards here. It would download all three boards as one PDF document, or I can save the frame. So I, the, the current frame, I can save it. So if you write out a math problem and it's a great example, I can save that image. Then I can wipe the board and let the next child do another math problem. And I, ha I can keep track of uh, who did what and, and the great examples that the students are doing. Um, I can rename it. I can remove it. And that is Jamboard in a nutshell. So here we are on my cell phone, and this is an Android phone, but it works exactly the same if you have an iPhone. And I'll click on the Jamboard app, and it opens up. So I'm going to open up the Jamboard that we were just working on. So here's the difference. Let me move me out of the way. On the cell phone side, I have all the different pins plus a laser pointer. So I can do a laser pointer that kind of follows my track around the screen. I have my eraser tool, uh, and I have my handwriting recognition as well as my shape recognition. And so I could draw just a finger drawn circle and boom, shape recognition works. Uh, I can integrate my Google Drive just like I could before. Um, it pulls up my drive and then I hit the plus button and I can do a sticky note from here and I could do a picture. Uh, it's not gonna let me do the picture. I've already tried this because I'm right here in the screen. Um, but I can add a photo from my photo album um, or take a picture if I'm not actually recording myself doing the video. So that's the difference between the cell phone app versus the browser interface versus the tablet view. Um, all of them are functional. All of them work on any tablet. So, but that's all I can think of on, on the how to get started with Jamboard. I know this is a long video. Uh, I do not look forward to editing this video down, um, but uh, try it out. Let me know how it works out in your classroom. And remember, uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and always subscribe to the channel so you know when I put out new videos and new content just like this. And uh, leave some suggestions down in the comments below on, on how this video could have been better or other apps that you would like to see me do tutorials on in the future. Uh, thanks and have a great weekend. Thank you.